You know, all of my life I've heard that a truly successful person, a really, really successful person, and even modestly successful, cannot run for public office. Just can't happen. And yet that's the kind of mindset that you need to make this country great again. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am officially running for President of the United States. Just a bag of barf here. However, people are asking, will Donald Trump run again? And the answer is, does that thing on his head crap in the woods? <laughs> I, I actually don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that thing on his head has a digestive system, so. Leave it up to Joel McHale, the comedian and star of one of my favorite shows, Community, to help us laugh from crying, shall we? I stood up and laid out, if we want to keep our kids safe, and I desperately want to keep our kids safe, the most effective step we can do is have police officers there to protect them who can intercept a mass murderer before he gets into the school and stop them. What you're proposing doesn't work. Texas Senator Ted Cruz, a despicable sellout for the gun lobby, gets heckled not just anywhere, but in his own state. Ted Cruz proposed a government shutdown to protest the Affordable Care Act, and everyone else in Congress decided to go along with it simply to get some time away from Ted Cruz. <laughs> the Tea Party is anti-socialism and anti-immigration, so it makes sense that their hero is a Cuban from Canada. I have obviously failed to galvanize and prod, if not shame, enough Americans <laughs> to be ever vigilant not to let a Chicago communist-raised, communist-educated, communist-nurtured, subhuman mongrel like the acorn community organizer gangster Barack Hussein Obama to weasel his way into the top office of authority in the United States of America. Musician Ted Nugent, who was never told to stick to music by the right, spewed this straight up bigotry towards President Barack Obama. Mr. President, you're no stranger to criticism. Ted Nugent called you a subhuman mongrel. And it's comments like that which really make me question whether we can take the guy who wrote Wang Dang Sweet Poon Tang seriously anymore. <laughs> Mikhail wisely puts it all in perspective. The first step to a stronger Medicare is to repeal Obamacare because it represents the worst of both worlds. Never forget this guy's asinine record. Good evening, Mr. President, or as Paul Ryan refers to you, yet another inner city minority relying on the federal government to feed and house your family. <laughs> as McHale is quick to remind us of. Barack Obama promised to close Guantanamo during his 2008 campaign. With that, let me sign the next executive order. And famously signed an order demanding its closure after his inauguration. But he now has fewer than seven weeks left in office and the window to keep his word is closing. He recently told reporters why Guantanamo is still open. It is true that I have not been able to close the darn thing because of the congressional restrictions that have been placed on us. Yeah, whatever. Mikhail, what do you have to say on this subject? It's amazing that you can still bring it with fresh, hilarious material. And my, uh, <laughs> my favorite bit of yours was when you said you'd close the detention facility at Guantanamo Bay. That was a classic. That was hilarious, hilarious. Still going. He's a real talent, and I would like to introduce him because he's going to say something that I think you'll find very, very interesting. I am proud to be here to endorse Donald Trump for President of the United States. Mikhail also targeted former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, who has kissed the ring of Donald Trump multiple times over his career. I know it's been a long night, but I promise that tonight will be both amusing and over quickly, just like Chris Christie's presidential bid. <laughs> I got a lot of these tonight, so uh, buckle up, Governor Christie. Excuse me, extender buckle up. All right. Um, no, I deserve that. I, I agree on that one. That You're right on. 
When Senator Ted Cruz of Texas sets his sights to get you, he's going to get you. You know, to prepare for tonight, uh, I've been watching a lot of cable news. I am a big fan of that lesbian on MSNBC, Chris Hayes. He's great. I'm sorry I'm so upset, but please help President Trump. If you can fi afford five or ten bucks, if you can't afford a dollar, fine. Just pray. Make sure you vote as early as you can in your state. Don't risk anything anymore. Vote as soon as you can. Pray for this country. Pray for this president. And if you got any money to give, give it. The pathetic stunts from South Carolina's Lindsey Graham stand the test of time. House of Cards has had a huge impact on Washington. What a great show. I haven't seen a Southern Senator give a tour de force performance like that since Lindsey Graham played Blanche Dubois in a streetcar named Desire. <laughs> and Lindsey, if you're here now, you can drop character anytime, man. Oh my. Um, if Monica Lewinsky says that while you were in the Oval Office area, you touched her genitalia, would she be lying? That calls for a yes, no, or reverting to your former statement. I will revert to my statement on that. If Monica Lewinsky says that you used a cigar as a sexual aid with her in the Oval Office area, would she be lying? Yes, no, or, or won't answer. I will revert to my former statement. You likely know where this is going from, Miguel. Hillary's daughter Chelsea is pregnant, which means in nine months we will officially have a sequel to Bad Grandpa. It also raises the question, when the baby is born, do you give Pill Clinton a cigar? <laughs> you guys sound like you're on a roller coaster right now. The America that we know and love doesn't exist anymore. Massive demographic changes have been foisted upon the American people. And they're changes that none of us ever voted for and most of us don't like. Laura Ingram is dog whistling to her audience right here, and she knows it thus. Fox News is the highest rated network in cable news. Yeah, I can't believe your table's pushed off that far. Um, <laughs> and it's all thanks to their key demographic, the corpses of old people who tuned into Fox News and haven't yet been discovered. Former Inside Edition host Bill O'Reilly is not here. He did host that. <laughs> Bill's got another book coming out soon, so he's making his ghostwriters work around the clock. <laughs> Bill O'Reilly, Megyn Kelly, and Sean Hannity are the Mount Rushmore of keeping old people angry. Hey everyone, if there are any stories that you want to bring to our attention, whether it is the local level, collegiate level, professional level, national level that you think would be worthy of a story and us covering, there are so many hours in a day and only so much we see. Submit them to me. Get at me on Twitter, on Instagram, and TikTok. Send me a DM, send me a tweet, what have you. We appreciate it. Hope you have a great day.